All right, so I just watched No Time to Die, the latest James Bond movie. And there's going to be spoilers in this, so if you haven't seen it and you want to see it, you know, now's the time to get lost. <sighs> I don't know where to begin with this. I mean, there's some stuff I liked about it, but not really. I mean, the action is good. That's what I'll say that's good about it is. And it's always good in the Daniel Craig Bond movies, but... That's really about it. I mean, it's just a it's just a flat movie for me. I mean, James Bond falls in love with this character named Madeline Swan, who is one of the most forgettable Bond girls I've ever seen in a movie. I mean, and that's really saying something. But the movie wants you to believe that like there's a genuine romance between these two, and I just never I never bought it. I don't, I don't think they have any chemistry whatsoever. It's the polar opposite of the Vesper Lind character from Casino Royale, which was, which was great. But this was just, felt like nothing. And she, Bond has a five-year-old daughter with this woman. And it's one of the strangest child characters I've ever seen in a movie. I mean, there's gunfire throughout the movie, and she's absolutely zero reaction to any of it. It was really strange. She was she was held kidnapped at one point. And she doesn't shed a tear. She doesn't call out for help. I mean, maybe it's those cool under pressure Bond jeans. But I don't know. It was, it was just very strange. And the villain in the movie, who's played by Rainy Malik, and he sounds like a real creep. He actually kind of sounds like Nightcrawler from X-Men 2. Also known to Bond fans as Boris. From Goldeneye. Uh, but this character could could have no other occupation than Bond villain. I mean, he's very cliche. And his goal is to use this weird nanotechnology to infect people's blood. And it acts as a poison for certain types of DNA. So if you, you're infected with it, you'll kill somebody if you get close to them or touch them. I don't know. It's fucking wacky. Um, and basically, his plan is mass genocide. A common Bond villain goal. Um, so Bond teams up with various people throughout the movie. And at one point he's working with Felix Leiter. Who has been a longtime staple of Bond movies. And he fucking dies. I mean, which is a running theme in this movie, by the way. I mean, it's called No Time to Die, but I think that's false advertising. It should be called Perfect Time to Die. But we'll get to that when we get to that. And Bond's been retired since the start of the movie. I forgot to mention that. And he teams up with the new 007, who is a character that, you know, her, her name is Naomi, which should finally put to bed this idea that James Bond is some kind of code name because she's 007 and her name's not Bond. And this movie's almost three hours long and none of these characters are fleshed out. I mean, this, this Nomi character, all we know about her is that she's very capable. She's replaced James Bond, and she has a delicate ego, much like James Bond himself. I mean, that's about it. She seems threatened by the fact that he's sort of back in business in this movie, like she might lose her job to him or something. And they work together. Again, it's a relationship that has, has no chemistry at all. And they head to the villain's island because every good Bond villain has to have an island, right? And this is where he plans to disperse this nano poison shit. And they need to blow it up. And in Bond's final confrontation with the villain, he's infected with the nano shit. And now he won't be able to go near anybody without killing them. So he decides to stay behind on the island to make sure the incoming airstrike is successful and hits the target. And destroys the facility. And in a scene that has all the emotional weight of a popcorn fart, he fucking dies. They actually did it. They fucking killed James Bond. You just killed James Bond. Is that who it was? I mean, how do you kill off James Bond? 
you can't kill off James Bond. I mean, my initial reaction to this was not unlike Charlton Heston's reaction at the end of Planet of the Apes. You maniacs! You blew it up! Oh, damn you! God damn you all to hell! And maybe if this was definitely going to be the last James Bond movie ever, I could maybe understand it, but they're already talking about who's going to be the next Bond. So what's the point of this shit? I mean, I really think this is kind of a Han Solo, Harrison Ford situation where Daniel Craig just hates playing Bond, so he just wanted him dead. (laughs) I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I really don't understand why there seems to be this running theme in modern Hollywood where they just... They just want to murder these iconic characters. I mean, it ha- it happens a lot now. It's as though they have this disdain for the past. But they're also so frustrated that they can't make anything of original. And they have to piggyback these legendary characters and franchises, all while simultaneously killing them off. I really don't get it. I don't get it at all. I mean, it's it's shocking to me. Shocking. Positively shocking. I mean, why is it that every ending for a character has to be death? I mean, obviously everybody dies. But do we need to see it in order to know the story's over? I mean, whatever happened to riding off into the sunset? Can we just go back to that? I guess not. I, I, by the way, they're making a new Indiana Jones movie right now, and I, I think there's at least a 50-50 chance that he's going to get whacked too. I mean, if you had to ask me when will they kill off James Bond in a movie, I would have said something like this. When sun rises in the west, sets in the east. When the seas go dry, when the mountains blow in the wind, like leaves. I don't know. It's fucked up in my opinion. Um, And if I had to give give it a rating, I would give it two dick rocks out of five. It's empty shock value that masquerades as emotional depth. But at least the Craig era is finally over. I really was not a fan. I know a lot of people liked him. And I really loved Casino Royale, but it was really downhill after that for me. I mean, Quantum of Solace is probably the most forgettable James Bond movie ever. Skyfall is entertaining, but it was so contrived, it's not even slightly believable. And Spectre was a shit show. And I I remember when Daniel Craig was first cast as James Bond, and everyone was flipping out because he had blue eyes. Now, that's a ridiculous thing to flip out over, but to go from flipping out over that to not even caring that they just killed him off. I mean, I think it shows that audiences have kind of become a little apathetic. I mean, to me, it's insane. It's insane that they just killed off James Bond. (laughs) It's crazy. I mean, he's this iconic legacy type character. You just don't kill off a character like that. Then again, maybe you do, because like I said, it's happening a lot lately. I don't know. Hopefully the next James Bond will be great because you know there's going to be one. And maybe this time they won't kill him off as though it means something just because they can't think of anything else to do with the character. I guess we'll see.